Welcome to the audio laboratory. On a previous flashcard, we already looked at how to program automation, but sometimes this rather technical approach just doesn't cut it. Instead, you might want to touch some physical knobs or faders and actually perform the changes you want to automate. You know, with feeling, a bit of human touch. Let's take a look at this in the digital audio workstation. Before we actually connect a MIDI controller, let's get familiar with a few basic automation modes that can be found in practically every DAW. I'll demonstrate these real quick on a simple volume envelope. In Reaper, you can change a track's automation mode here, either in this dialog or by right-clicking the automation button. Let's start with read mode. You could also call it read only or lock mode, because this won't record anything. It will simply perform any automation that's already on the track, without changing it. In this mode, you can even see the volume fader moving in sync with the automation. If I grab the fader, it has no effect whatsoever, it just snaps right back. In write mode, on the other hand, the current position of the fader is continuously written onto the automation lane. This will overwrite any previous values. Do note that you don't have to hit record for this to happen, the automation is written even during regular playback. If you have several automation lanes on a track, they will all be recorded and overwritten in write mode, no matter if you touch the controls or not. So, if you don't want to record all of them at the same time, you can disarm the ones you don't want to record, either here in the track's automation settings via these arm checkboxes, or using the green record buttons in the automation lane headers. If write mode is a little too destructive for you, and you don't want to keep arming and disarming automation lanes, Maybe touch mode is the better option. Here nothing will happen unless you actually move the fader. Only if you grab it, its value is recorded onto the automation lane. But as soon as you let go, the fader is ignored again. That's perfect for punching in and correcting small passages. Latch is pretty much the same as touch. Nothing happens until you actually touch the fader. But then it will latch, meaning it will keep recording even after you let go of the fader. The default setting for new tracks in Reaper is Trim. Trim is like read mode, but with an added bonus that's very handy for volume and panning. The automation is performed as programmed, but by moving the fader, you can add an offset to the automation. For example, if I lower the fader, this automation is still performed in the same way, but at an altogether lower level. It's simply shifted down. The fader position is the baseline, and the automation is performed relative to that. If you're like us and you think to yourself, well, that's an awful lot of unnecessary points right there, you'll be happy to know that there's an option to reduce the number of points on a curve and make everything a little more OCD friendly. Ah, much better. Now we want to go one step further and use an external MIDI controller to record automation for a few plugin parameters. First make sure that your MIDI controller is properly set up and that your DAW accepts it as an input. Next, you need to associate the plugin parameters you want to automate with the controls on your MIDI device. This process is called MIDI Learn, and the easiest way to do this in Reaper is to simply click a control in the plugin. For example, Master Volume. You don't even have to move it, just click it once. And then head on to the parameter menu. Here you'll see that last parameter you touched in the plugin, and if you click Learn, you can assign a MIDI control to that parameter by simply wiggling it. All done. Now this fader on the MIDI keyboard controls the master volume parameter of the synth plugin. You can also do this from the tracks automation menu if you want an overview of all plugins and parameters. Let's assign a few more parameters. And now we are ready to record some automation. I'll choose Latch Mode. In case you're wondering where the automation lanes are, you don't have to manually add them. If you're in any mode that writes automation, like Write, Touch or Latch, a lane is created for you as soon as you change a parameter. So if I wiggle all four faders, all the necessary lanes pop up. If 
simple faders and knobs are not fancy enough for you, you could use an expressive controller that transmits MIDI messages. For instance, this digital theremin. It has two antennas, one for volume and one for pitch, which can be controlled by your hand movements. But we don't want to use this as a sound generator. We want to use it as an expressive controller to record the hand movements as automation. So, let's assign a parameter to each antenna. By the way, if you want to MIDI learn basic track parameters like volume or panning, you can do this in the action list. We find the selected track and last touch track bindings especially useful. As you can see, there are plenty of options for automating your parameters. And even without a MIDI controller, you can get pretty far by just using a mouse. That's it for this flashcard. Don't hesitate to leave a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this one, subscribe and ring the bell. Bye.